the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw this, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Over the past few days, I've been chatting with my former graduate student, my former PhD advisee, in the university in Manila because he has been he has received a presidential appointment to be the person in charge the chairman of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts and it's a great honor of course I'm chatting with him because I have projects but he was also chatting with me because he was concerned about the university he was leaving and so we need to proceed with our PhD program that we are making. Of course, it has to pass the academic senate discussions, and we were preparing. And he mentioned in the course of our conversation, he said, even if I die, I will defend the PhD program that we have created. In our language, when we talk about death, even if you're just joking, when you say, even if I die, when you mention the word death, the courteous way, the courteous response should be to say, I'm translating in English, to say, may God be far. Meaning to say, we are very talk talkative people, you know. We talk about things. Sometimes we mention death, our death. Some say, knock on wood. We say, may God be far. Like, God hears everything we say. But about death, may he be far. May he not be able to hear it. Of course, it is a courtesy to say that, may you live longer. Because the greeting, may you live longer, it's good news. We like life. But come to think of it, all our life, all power, all authority in all creation depends on God. For that matter, what we wish for, the life that we wish for, is not just this human life, because we know it will end. But what we really wish for is the life of God. Talking about the life of God is something unreachable. In fact, we need to die first. The end of the human life illustrates to us our mortality illustrates to us our need for God. In our Christian faith, who is that God? Who God is, is what we celebrate in today's solemnity. God revealed himself to us as the Trinity. 
And perhaps one of the simplest way to comprehend this difficult mystery is to refer you back to what I was saying. May God be far. Actually, it is impossible. God is never far. God is near. And He is near to us, and His nearness to us is demonstrated by the mystery of the Trinity. God is near to us as a father. There are so many fathers here. I know some of them. Filipino, Indonesian fathers. It's not yet Father's Day. But come to think of it, the nearness of God we experience as the nearness of a father. Of a father to his son. Of a father to his daughter. In the scriptures, we read about it in the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. In the Old Testament, God was understood to be far. Not only that, that he is not intimate, that he is to be feared. But Moses, in the reading today, in the first reading, told the people, was it ever heard of? Did the people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did? and live, etc. In other words, Moses was telling the people, look here, God is so near. We are so near to that experience of God. And that is why Moses says, fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. This encouragement coming from Moses to God's chosen people allows us to understand that even in the Old Testament, there is already a shift to try to understand God as close to his people. We understand God as close to us as Father. But we also understand God close to us a spirit and that is what we read in the second reading today let me go to the second reading this is the letter to the Romans telling us that we have received that spirit it is that spirit that allows us to recognize the Father. And so we cry out, Abba. It is the life of God in us, the Spirit. And so my brothers and sisters, God is close to us as a Father. God is close to us as Spirit. And in the same second reading, in the same letter to the Romans, we, this is made possible because of Jesus. Jesus taught us. He taught us to call his father our father too. That is why we say, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. This is the prayer of Jesus. He was calling God his Father. But not only his Father. He tells us 
He is your Father too. So pray to Him this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, and then we understand that it is Jesus who taught us to call God our Father. And not only that, we know that the life of Jesus, His offering of His life, is actually for us. That is why in the letter to the Romans, it concludes by saying that if only we suffer with Him, so that we also may be glorified in Him. What is this? This is a reference to the passion of the Lord. That the Lord was not alone in that passion. We too have our life. We too suffer in this life. And yet, the sufferings that we have in this life, we undergo so that we may share in the glory of Jesus, in the glory of the Father. Let's complete the picture. That glory of Jesus is, in the profession of faith, we say, Jesus is sitting at the right, at the right hand of God. What is that right? A few times, and even yesterday, we have been telling the brothers the Dominican Brothers in formation, that whenever it is a solemnity, you see when we pray, we have the right choir and the left choir. The right is always the place of honor. Of course, we alternate every week, which is the lead choir. So this week it is the right, next week it is the left, then it's the right, then it's the left. They get accustomed to it, like changing roles every week. But it's not like that. Whenever there is a solemnity, it is always the right. Because the highest feast is of the highest honor. So even if it's the left who is leading this week, we go back to the right. To put into, the, into our minds, an understanding that is in the scriptures that the right is the place of honor. So when we speak of Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, what is this truth? It is a Trinitarian truth. Jesus is equal with the Father. Jesus is equal with the Spirit. It is the same God the same mystery and honor we have, we accord to God. Finally, my brothers and sisters, we say that in the commandments, we need to honor God. It's the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is very close to it. We need to honor our neighbor. What we do today is to honor God. But what is honor? Sometimes we understand honor to be like something that we receive for ourselves. In fact, today, even on a Sunday, I have a Zoom meeting regarding who will receive the honor, the academic honor in the university, the highest honor. It seems that it is being contested. Students are computing their grades. That is good. They're competing. Who will have the highest honor? But what is honor? Our competing for honor is actually rooted is a misunderstanding of honor. 
Thomas Aquinas says, Honor as in honorante, non est in honoratur. That is the definition of honor. In English, honor is in the one honoring. It is not in the one being honored. Quite difficult to understand. Why? Because we always understand honor to be like, you honor me, thank you. I have the honor. In reality, honor is not here. In the one honored. Honor is the one honoring. So in the case of university honors, where is the honor? It is not in the person receiving the honor. Honor is in the university giving the honor. Now, when we are commanded, honor God. That is the first commandment. Honor your neighbor. That is the second commandment. Where is honor? It is in us. The one giving the honor. We are given the chance to praise God. We are given the chance to worship God. We are given the chance in this life to love God. That is the greatest gift. To be given the chance in my life to praise God, to worship God, to love God. And the greatest gift in my life to love my family. To love your wife. To love your husband, to love your children, that is the greatest chance given to us in our life. Do it now before you die. Love your wife. Love your husband. Love your family. When our time is up, no more chance. This is real. Love is real. Do it now. My brothers and sisters, this is the lesson we learn from the Trinity. It is not too difficult a mystery after all. It is actually the most practical of all mysteries. Honor God. Honor your family. Honor our neighbor. Now that we know that the mystery is not far from us, now that we know that God is so near to us as a father, as a son, as a daughter, and as God's life, God's spirit in us, May we, who have come to understand the mystery of the life of God in us as we gather in the Eucharist, then continue to live in that life. Continue to receive God in the Eucharist because that is our life. And continue, despite difficulties, despite trials, despite sufferings, in this life, to suffer, to suffer with God, to suffer like Jesus, so that, as the letter to the Romans tells us, if only we suffer with him, so that we also may be glorified in him. It means honoring the Trinity, honoring our life, so that this life may grow more into the life of God in us. Amen.